John Lusk here of Lusk Archery Adventures. Series testing, successful hunting. Well, it's January 2022, and I'm really excited to unveil to you some of my updated testing procedures for broadheads for this new year. Last year, I was able to test uh, about 60 different broadheads or do broadhead test videos, about 60 different videos. And I really want to thank all of you for your support, for watching, subscribing, sharing, commenting, even donating many of those broadheads. I really appreciate it. And it was a great success last year. And I hope that it becomes even more successful and more effective at helping people select the best broadhead for their setup in 2022 with this new procedure. And let me just say, if you're interested in seeing a certain head being tested, if I haven't tested it yet, or if I tested it in the way past, but now I've updated my procedures and you want to see me tested with the new procedures, please mail me a pack. I just need three new broadheads in order to do a test. That's really been the bread and butter of this channel is you guys donating the heads. So I hope you continue to do that. I've got about a dozen that people have already donated lined up to be tested in these first few weeks of the year, but, uh, but the more the merrier, okay? So send them on in. All right, now let me just explain why am I doing this broad head test. Can't any broadhead kill an animal if you shoot it in the right spot? Well, the short answer is yes, it can. I mean, you could take the worst broadhead, and I've tested some really lame broadheads over the years. I would not want to get shot with it, right? I would not want that broadhead, even the worst of the worst, the cheapest of the cheap, I wouldn't want to get shot with it because they can be super lethal. However, all broadheads are not created equal. There are so many things we cannot control when it comes to a hunting situation, but we can control which broadhead we select. So I try to come up with tests under uniform conditions, testing with uniform mediums to give you data points, data points that can be compared from one broadhead to the next so you can find the best broadhead for your needs, based on your bow and arrow setup and specifications, based on your, your length of shot, based on what animal you're pursuing, your style of hunting. You can just look through all these data points and figure out which broadhead really suits your needs. Then in addition, I come up with an overall scoring system for those broadheads. And in this new year, I've got a new scoring system. I'll continue to do the golden arrow, zero to 10 golden arrows for the for each of the broadheads. But in addition to that, I've created an algorithm that's pretty complex and will score the heads based on the, each of the data points, how they fare in each of the tests. And it will give a numerical score of zero to a hundred. And so it'll be really, I think, kind of fun to see exactly how they measure. And the way I've done it this year with my testing is I'm using the exact same testing procedure for both mechanicals and for fixed blades. In the past, I had some difference between the two, but this year, I'm not gonna do that because I want you to be able to compare mechanicals and fixed blade heads on a level playing field. There's you know, the fixed, head blade, fixed blade head camp and the mechanical head camp, and you know, each has its strengths and weaknesses, but in order to appreciate those strengths and weaknesses, it helps to show them in the exact same test. So I'm gonna be doing that this year. Now let me explain the, the areas of testing that I'm gonna do. Many of them are the same. Some of them have been tweaked just a little bit. First is flight. Flight is gonna count for 20% of the score. But I'm not just calling it flight, I'm calling it flight forgiveness. And there's a difference. The reason is, like, out of my bow that's very well tuned, my arrows are really well balanced and set up and very straight, and my form is pretty good, honestly, every broadhead flies very well for me, okay? I can shoot them out to 40 yards, and you'll notice in the scoring, they either get like a 9 or a 10, because that's how they fly for me. But that's not real world for where most people are at, okay? Most people's bows may not be as well tuned or their form not quite as good or their, their arrows not quite as, as set up, as forgiving as mine are. So I'm coming up with more of a real world score to give you. Now it's gonna be based on uh, one field point and two broadheads shot into a target at 40 yards, just like I've done. But it's also gonna be based on the overall surface area 
created by those blades. The greater the surface area, the less forgiving that those broadheads are going to be. And it's going to be based on my own perception of how well they fly. Mechanicals are going to get an edge over fixed blade heads because they have, by and large, less surface area. So you'll be seeing that in the scoring. But the first category is flight forgiveness. And again, that's going to be 20% of the score. The second area is sharpness. And that's going to be just like I've done it in the past, using the edge on up sharpness testing machine. I really love that. It has a little copolymer uh, cable wire that you press the edge down on and it measures how many grams of pressure it takes to break that copolymer wire. And it's really super consistent, that wire, and, and very regulated. So it's a pretty accurate measurement of the, the sharpness. And then I have a system of scoring based on the amount of grams of pressure it takes to break that wire. I do that initially out of the box. And then I also test edge retention by testing it again after penetration test one, that I'll explain in a little bit. So after it's shot through a medium, I test it again and see how much of its edge it's lost. And then I'm adding in another category to the sharpness, and that is the ease of resharpening or replacing the blades. So that's going to account for some of the score. The overall sharpness accounts for 20% of the score. Then another area that I'm, I'm measuring and testing is the cut size. This makes a big difference in the broadheads, and I always list the cut size in the open, closed position, I comment on that. But now I'm going to incorporate that into the scoring system as well. So there's going to be a, a score for the total cut on impact. There's going to be a score for the, uh, the, the maximum cut that the broadhead reaches, which if it's a fixed blade, it's the same all the way through. But a mechanical, it expands. It'll have that. And it'll also have a bit of a score for the, uh, the, the diameter of the cut. Because I found in my own hunting situations that the wider a cut is, the more effective the bloodletting is. So all that's going to be factored into the cut size in the score in that, and that's going to also be 20% of the score. Then I'm going to be testing for penetration. And I'm doing the, the penetration test that I've done before, penetration test one. I shoot uh, through a half inch layer of MDF, sandwiched between one third inch rubber foam mat, and then it goes into clear ballistics FBI grade gel. And so it's a combination of those different mediums. The rubber foam mat kind of simulates hide and, and some, some tougher tissue. The MDF simulates a bit like bone, and then the, uh, the gel simulates a, a bit like tissue. Now I know gel has its limitations. It tends to stick to the shafts and stick to the, the broadheads as well. So it's limited, but that's one of the tests that we're going to do. Then we're going to continue to do what we call penetration test two, and that's where I shoot it into layered cardboard. And that tests the broadhead's penetration in a whole different way. Sometimes the, the broadheads don't do that well in the gel, but they do extremely well in the layered cardboard and vice versa. So it's another good data point. And then I'm going to be adding in, by popular demand, a third part of this penetration test, and that is the angled penetration. And what I'm using is a quarter inch of MDF covered with uh, like, a, like an indoor-outdoor carpet, kind of like a golf carpet thing that's taped over it to simulate the hide, and I'm shooting it at 30 degrees and seeing if it penetrates. I'm not going to quantify the penetration, just seeing if it penetrates or if it skips off. And it'll get a score for that. And all three of those penetration tests, one, two, and the, the angled shot will all give a score and that will account for 20% of the overall score. And then the final area is durability. And the durability I'm doing a little bit different. I'm going to shoot, again, all the heads, mechanical or fixed, through the same process. Three shots through a half inch of MDF, and then if they're still going strong, and that'll count for 12% of the 20%, and then if they're still going strong, two shots through 22 gauge steel plate. And then if they're still going strong, one shot into concrete. And so the scoring of that accounts total for 20%. 12% of that is going through the MDF. How well did it make it through the MDF? How did the broadhead fare after those three shots? And then 5%, is on a score of 1 to 10, how it fared through the steel plate, two shots. And then the final 3% is how it fared into the concrete. Now, if the head gets really bent up on the MDF, 
then it's not going to make it to the steel plate. And if it doesn't do well through the steel plate, then it's not going to make it to the concrete. So not every head will go into the concrete. It's kind of like a knockout round of durability, and they'll be scored accordingly. Okay, then in addition to these areas, these five areas that are 20% of the score each, I've got some bonus categories, and that's things that are difficult to quantify, but maybe a head has an extra super large cut, or extra thick blades, or some unique design feature, it's rotational ability, or something like that that's harder to quantify, then I'm going to add that as some bonus points at the end. So this way, again, you'll be able to compare any head whether fixed or mechanical, using the same scoring system. And I also want to let you know that I'm going to detail uh, the algorithm that I'm using and an explanation of all the tests that I do in the, uh, the description box and I'll, of, of every video. And so I'll just cut and paste that each time. So if you're wondering how I came up with what score or why I do what test I do, please just consult that. And feel free to ask any questions, make any comments. Your input really helps this whole process get better and better. I, I don't think of it just as my process, but really our process that we're coming up with collaboratively to be able to help each other have the best information possible to choose the best broadhead possible for our hunting situation and needs. <laughs>